Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the classes of organic farming. In this lecture, I will deal with the topic status of organic farming in India, its scope and limitations. If we see from very old age practice, from the 10,000 years back, our agriculture has started. Previously, we were, our forefathers were the hunters and gatherers, where they have roamed a very vast stretch of area and collected different type of foods for their need. Later, when the subtle cultivation has been occurred, there is a need of different type of seed and agriculture has been promoted. Pre the previous crop we want to have taken for the this is barley and wheat. After that, due to the population growth over the years, the intensification of agriculture has been started. And after that, we have seen the era of green revolution and we have also seen the indiscriminate use of insecticide, fertilizer, pesticide and other things. And as a result, there are a lot of soil deterioration, quality of the food has been deteriorated, pesticide residue and others. And if we see, we can tell our father of organic agriculture in modern scientific era, Sir Albert Howard. So, he has uh, developed different type of organic farming technologies and he believed that the animal manure, cover crop, crop rotation and the different type of organically pest control is enough for a sufficient yield level. And one of the major important, he also in his later part, he has moved to India and he served as the director of different important agricultural institution and give referral guidance how to go organically. The demand of organic food was also stimulated. There was a famous book has written by the Rachel Carson by the Silent Spring. Due to the indiscriminate use of the DDT, not for agriculture use, but for the other use, lots of birds has been died. So, a book has been come publication Silent Spring and it was the best seller in many countries and it was the main factor for leading to the ban of insecticide DDT in 1972 in the United States. So, after that the organic farming has again turned some term. There is consumer preference has come, people want what is organic farming, they want we do not want the pesticide residue loaded crops. So, organic farming has a new dimension again start from our traditional high input intensive agriculture. And after that, we have also come the Masanobu Fukuka from Japan. So, he is also a revolutionary and gave different type of ideas how we can grow a good crop, a healthy crop and a good amount of yield without giving any fertilizer, insecticide or pesticide which are synthesized in the factory. So, if we see the soil health, generally previously our traditional way everyone has some livestock and we have getting enough amount of organic manure. Maybe it is cattle dung, maybe pig manure, maybe sheep manure, goat manure or buffalo manure or maybe horse manure. So, this organic manure also they are bulky in nature, they not only contain the major nutrients that is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, but they also contain several micronutrients. Suppose the boron, molybdenum, zinc, iron, copper and these are called micronutrient does not affect that they are very low role is very limited. They are only called the micronutrient because they needed very less amount by plants. So, if we see over the years when people are giving the organic manures and they are taking one or two crops from a particular field, we have not reported so much of micronutrient deficiency. But if we see in the era from 1950, we have seen the nitrogen deficiency has been started. After that, if you see in 1970, also we are reporting zinc, phosphorus, nitrogen and if you see in 2025, lots of nutrients are become deficient in the soil. It is may be iron some part, it is may be sulphur, manganese, borom, molybdenum and what is not. So, this is due to the 
enhance food gain production because every time we are mining so much nutrient from the soil. But farmers are not using different micronutrient. They are applying only the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, these three major nutrients. So, micronutrients are become deficient in the soil. So, if we also see when the factor productivity initially in the 70 or 80, if we apply some fertilizer, we are getting very high yield. But over the sea, the trend has been decreased. Now, we are getting very less amount, even we are applied too much high amount of the fertilizer. So, previously to get the same level of yield, probably we are getting some amount of nitrogen or phosphorus fertilizer, but to get the same amount of yield in nowadays, we have to give more and more fertilizer. So, fertilizer response has been decreasing. So, this is a major area of concern in the main belt, mainly the Punjab, Horiyan and Western Uttar Pradesh. And if you see Indian agriculture, we have only 2.4 percent of the world land. We have only 4 percent of the water resources, but we have to feed 17.5 percent of the world population. Nowadays, our population is 131 crore. And if we see, we have to sustain this 2.4 percent area. And this area will not increase because some parts is area for the roads, maybe some airports, maybe some other factory and other lots of area is also degraded. So, our agricultural area is reducing and our population is increasing. So, there is a tremendous challenge for the agricultural scientists as well as the policy maker and farmers how to feed our future population. And for that soil health is very much important. We could not disturb our soil so much that after 50 hours, years, our future generation will get nothing from our soil. If we see after that, climate change is a now natural phenomenon. Due to the extreme temperature, due to the enhancement of greenhouse gas emission in our atmosphere, there are lots of events which are occurring frequently which are not getting earlier. Suppose, Suppose in areas suppose we are getting heavy rains, so whatever the crop has been damaged, in a single day all crop has been gone. Sometimes there is a very good condition of the crop, but not a single drop of rain for last 20 days. And if there is no irrigation facility, there is a tremendous chance of the total crop failure. And this is going to be increased in the near future. So, we have to think in such a way, so that our agricultural technology should be sustainable. So, that even is some type of flood or maybe some type of drought or some intense rainfall, in can cope up with this remain. And for the soil health is very much important and organic farming has a some potential to address this climatic issues. If we see, this is the developed countries and this is the where we are presenting this the developing countries. Generally, we want to achieve in the, this area. So, we also want our productivity, our economics, but Due to the climate smart development and climate smart technology, we have cannot go beyond, we cannot use more energy, we cannot use more fossil fuel or more just input different type of fertilizers and pesticide. So, because there is also a convention, United Net Climatic Change Convention and they have put some restriction over the different countries. So, there is a limitation of the greenhouse gas emission also. So, our technology should be low carbon, it should be low water use, should be low nitrogen and also should be low energy. So, by investing very less amount of water, nitrogen and energy, we should get more and more yield. And if we see over the years, how the soil has been just disturbed by different type of rainfall, maybe heavy rainfall. If you see in the, suppose in the area of Meghalaya, if we see the, what is the soil loss, percentage of area of affected by the soil erosion, 77.9 percent. Meghalaya, you know, that is one of the wettest area in the world. In some parts of Cherapunja and Mausiram, we are getting more than 10,000 millimeter of rainfall. So, in this rainfall area, there is a very much chance of high of soil erosion. And when the soil erosion is, soil and water is going from the field, it take lot of nutrients from the soil. So, soil will be become barren after sub 10 years. So, in this condition, we have to try promote sub type of cultivation, maybe cover crops or diversified cropping. We cannot go monocropping only one crop with high input resistance. We have to go for organic farming, organic manure, because these organic manures are known to bound the soil. They have enhanced the physical capability of the soil. They have aggregate stability increase. So, when the aggregate stability of the soil is increased, so definitely soil binding capacity is increased and the soil erosion is less. So, organic farming by applying of the different type of principles like cover crop, green manure, crop rotation, legume incorporation and the organic manure, they have a very high chance so that we can cope up with in future so that our soil 
as well as the water loss and nutrient loss from a particular ecosystem will be less. This is our Indian figure. Although we have achieved sufficient food grain production, our current food grain production is more than 300 million ton. We have also produced more than 300 million ton of horticultural crops like vegetables and fruits. But again, our 62 million children, that is 6.2 crore, are under 5 or stunted growth. So, it is not due to the total lack of our food grain production. May, maybe there is some problem of the efficient distribution of the food grains. And besides this, there is a quality food is needed because a majority mass of India, they are dependent on their food for rice or wheat or maize. So, this type of major cereal crops. And if these crops are deficient in the nitrogen, so probably our health also will be concerned, particularly very small and marginal section of the society. So, if we made good quality food, where our nutrient content is very good, where the micronutrients like zinc, manganese, iron, if this content amount in the food is very good, then automatically our health will be improved and there will be, will be less anemic patients. This is the world agriculture in 2008. So, if you see, if just total area is highest in Oceania, that is the Australia, and second is by the Europe. So, and if we see different countries in total largest country wise, how much the global organic agriculture is doing, because or organic agriculture has a tremendous potential, and last 10 to 15 years growth is increasing more than 20 percent. If you see Australia is occurring, is very big country, but the population is very less. At only 63 percent of the world area under organic farming is covered by a particular country. And if you see the other country like France, China, in India we are very less here, only 3 percent. Only 3 percent area of the total world area under organic is in India. But India has a tremendous potential to go a organic hub of the world, so that we can produce enough organic food to export orient and we can get very much good amount of foreign currency money. And if you see organic agriculture in India under the NPOP that is the national production or national project on organic farming, we are 27.45 lakh ton. We, we have also farmer about NPO farmers is 13.25 hectare. And if you see our vision organic policy, our government is promoting to do if the, our total organic area is somewhere, so we want to make minimum 10 percent area of the our total agricultural cultivable land under organic. So, if we see our current average is 2.8 million hectare. So, this is only 2.4 percent. It is very less amount if we see as compared to other. So, there is the target by our government. By 2025, we have to meet additional 2.5 million hectare under organic farming. This organic farming means not only in the conversion period, we need certified organic products so that we can be, there is a huge demand in the cities. People are asking for the organic produce. Consumers are aware in the big good hotel and also the exported. So, there is a too much demand in the domestic market as well as the international market. So, there we have to increase our production and only the, by organic farming area as well as the yield. So, if you see the total market share as India, our the total market is 8500 crore and export size is 5000 crore. We are every year we are exporting 5000 crore organic produce. But if you see the growth that I want to tell in the 2016-17 to 2018-19, it is 25 percent, 39 percent and 49 percent. So, this production or market growth is very tremendous and in the near future there may be in 2020-90 everywhere we are know the, due to the COVID impact and other things our export has been little bit reduced. But in the near future there is a too much scope and also you have seen our quality not only amount, not only the total amount of organic being produced or exported has increased, but also the value. Total amount of foreign exchange we have also earned over the years is a very high amount. If we see the organic agriculture in India under PGS mode, two type of organic certification is there. One is the third party certification that is little bit lengthy in process. There is strict guidelines followed, but after that certification you can sell your produce in the international market. So, but every farmers cannot afford that. Most of the our farmers are very small, marginal, very resource poor farmers, very poor. So, in that condition, government has initiated a new scheme that is participatory guarantee scheme, that is PGS scheme. Under the PGS scheme, a farmer and farmer, maybe 10 or 20 farmer, they make a small group, 
follow certain guidelines given by the NPOP standard and they can get the certification of the PGS. Under that, you cannot export your products to the other countries, but one thing is very good, within the whole India, you, within the domestic market of India, you can the sell produce. And if you see, this is the major state, the highest area is under, nowadays is Rajasthan, is Madhya Pradesh, and that is also one thing, if you see, the area is also increasing. Number of farmers, if you see, the highest is the Madhya Pradesh. But in case of area, probably some other state, because this is due to the land hunting capacity. Also in the some state, although the area may be organically grow, produce area is higher, but, but farmers may be less because they have little bit higher holding capacity. So in the PGS certification process, we have 9 lakh farmer and 6 lakh hectare or area is there. So you see the organic agriculture in the certificate process, so we have area under cultivation is 22.99 lakh per hectare. Apart from that, you suppose your harvestings are wild harvest, maybe in Sundarban areas, in the very Sundarban area you are collecting honey. So that can be also promoted as organic when there is no human intervention in the production cycle. So if you see our total sale, if total production is 27.4 like lakh ton. So there is a very good near future for India, there is a too much scope to enhance the area of organic farming production of the organically produce and also the value for the export. And if you see this is the different area, if we see a Sikkim is a small area, that is only 4 percent area, but do one thing very interested is their government has declared Sikkim as a totally organic state. This is the first state of India, very small state, a hilly state in the northeastern part of India, but it is declared organic. So, but it is not probably possible for a very big area like Madhya Pradesh or Maharashtra or Punjab because there is a too much human population and by going organically, you have need too much organically resources like manure, compost, vermicompost that may not be immediately possible. But for a small successful model, Sikkim has trained that we can go for organic for some particular area and some particular crops. The total area is highest also the Madhya Pradesh, but if you see the production, the production is high in the Maharashtra. The total export volume of India is 88 lakh 88,179 million ton. So we are getting a very good amount, the more than 1,040 million US dollar. So most of where our organic produce when you are growing, there is a question among the farmers or maybe some other persons where our organic produce is going. The majority of the country where we are selling the organic produce is the USA because I have already told they has the highest global market for the organically produce. Then the European Union, Canada and also Switzerland and Australia. And if you see which produce are we are selling more because one is which country and second is the our major is the soy meal because soybean we are producing. We are using the soybean oil for our consumption and whatever the leftover part about our industrial process that is called soy meal. And that is a very much demand in outside for their just uh, livestock population, then by oil seed millet. But if you see in all these areas, our fruits and vegetables as well as the spices concentration is very low. But we are very much high production of the vegetable fruits and spices. And previously thousand and thousand years back, India has a very renowned for the spice destination of the world. So we have to make our spices in such a way, we have to pack them in such a way, value addition and proper organic certification. So we that catch the international market and can we can earn a huge amount of foreign exchange. If you see, one thing I want to know, when we do for organic, organic nowadays is a common, but when the initial for a organic farming in a particular area for a particular crop, some question come into the farmer's mind. So to know whether this technology is a feasible for a particular area, we have done the SWOT sort analysis. S means strength, W means weakness, O means opportunity and T means threat. So we have distributed in Indian agriculture how it is strength, what is your weakness. If we see we have the highest larger cultivable area that is after China. So we have a very good amount area. We have also the top three countries production of cereals, milk, egg, fruit, vegetables. So this crop if we go for organically we can chance there is a lots of export. We have a very good quality manpower, skilled manpower 
and very cheap manpower, one of the cheap manpower in the world. If we make them such one skill for the organic production, then our organic production as well as the organic value of the total produce can be enhanced substantially. Climatic variability, India is such a diverse country, if you go for the Rajasthan, there may be very less amount of water, 300 millimeter, you go to the Meghalaya, more than 10,000 millimeter rainfall. If you go to the Kashmir side, there is snowy field, if you go to the Rajasthan, that is the desert, you have sea, so you have different plain lands. So, when the climatic variability is there, you can grow virtually every crop in India, probably not in one state, but if you our whole ecological condition, we can grow from apple to rice, we can produce lots of vegetables and spices. So, this is a tremendous opportunity for India to grow for organic. Similarly, the robust agricultural scientific mind and facilities. Our agricultural system, one of the largest scientific system in the world. There are lots of ICAR, that is Indian Council of Agricultural Research organization in the India. And also there are of different more than 40 or 50 state agricultural universities and colleges. So, there are lots of organic package of practices is nowadays available, but only need of the hour through efficient decentralization of that technology from the lab to the farmer's field by efficient extension mechanism techniques. But there is certain weakness also we have that is lack of scientific certification agency in the market because or if, if you go to also everywhere organic market is not developed. So, probably farmers may face some problem in the certification and also the marketing. So, in that condition growing a high value crop under organic farming may be a little bit problematic because if there is too much climatic variability and there is no rainfall, his crop may be failure. Poor infrastructure facility in case of post harvest process. If you see our just a majority amount of foods and vegetable everywhere being wasted. If you go also the here market, summer days a farmer is selling tomato 50 kilo, if he cannot sell 10 kilo tomato within one or two days that will be destroyed. Because we have not developed yet so much cold chain facility. So, there is infrastructure gap is there and in the near future we have to work on that. And also the threats, suppose there is always question if you go for organic your yield will be low. How can you feed the 130 crore population? So, there is it one answer simply organic farming was always being promoted for some niche area from some particular area where farmers are already using very less amount of inorganic fertilizer or pesticide and so also the area where soil capacity is very good, soil health is very good, soil organic carbon is very high, climate is moderate. So, we are not advocating to go for organically to the whole India. Uh, that is why our government has also just targeted only 10 percent of the total agriculture area, not the 100 percent area. So, that threat, that area that can be converted into a potential area because also the lengthy certification process, but we have a very good high opportunity because every time we are getting very high amount of foreign direct investment. We have also vast forest area and diverse wildlife, this forest biomass, these leaves, these jungle leaves and also other crop residue. We have a very high amount of livestock population in the world. If this livestock population they we have used scientifically their manure, their urine with the help of arthoam and other composting and vermicomposting technology, we can produce amount amount of organic manure to justify or to support our organic farming so that our yield will not reduced. And there is an advancement of IT sector, I think one of the best IT sector is now growing in India. Everywhere we have a very good technology of the IT. We have a very good mobile facility nowadays, internet facility. So, a farmers can easily get access what will be the climate tomorrow, what is there any chance of rainfall? So, probably he can harvest his crop. He can also know where he, if he go in the which market, he will get a better price. So, this technology previously not available, but with the advancement of the IT sector, this is nowadays in coming and this will also help in future also a very good role for a better organic market or the organic production. And the consumer awareness. Previously, people are not so much worried about the consumer. Nowadays, everywhere you are going, the pesticide loaded food. Now, also every family person also think. People are also using this type of organic food. Whenever you grow for the market, suppose you go for the off season, suppose in the summer season you are going purchasing for cauliflower, cabbage and broccoli. It is 100 percent if you grow some crop out of his season, the chance of insect, pest and disease will be more. So, the pesticide use will be more. So, what people previously people want to do, they also want to wash their vegetables and fruits in water two or three times. 
Nowadays, they are also preferring the organic produce. If the organic produce, even the 20, 30 or 50 percent, however, there are a certain class of population who are ready to pay for their children. So, organic farming, if I can, it can be amalgam of three things. One is tradition, whatever our old traditional knowledge, how to use the organic manure, how to use the FOIM, what is the role of cow urine, our forefathers has known. So, this technology all have, what is they have applied is not superstition. There is too much knowledge and science between that. Second is the innovation. Previously, there are lots of availability was not available. Nowadays, the enriched compost, vermicomposting technology, biofertilizer, maybe rhizobium, phosphosolubilizing bacteria and other is there. Similarly, the science. Nowadays, we know for a particular growing of a particular crop, how much nutrient is need. This is crop, this is the season, which time we have to grow, in which spacing we have to grow, which variety we have to use. So, by this proper amalgamation of the tradition, innovation and the science, by these three techniques, we can promote our organic farming in a substantial way for India. If you see, this is our indigenous organic manure. Our forefathers have used year after year. Maybe it may be cattle dung, it may be cow dung, uh, buffalo dung, it may be your goat manure, maybe poultry manure, sim manure, horse manure. So, there are lots of organic manures available and this is India, this is one of the strength. This and new science, whatever the done under the ICR in different organic farming pro program, we have seen these are not only source of the nutrient, but they are also source of beneficial bacteria. This bacteria helps in the soil for the nitrogen fixation, phosphorus solubilization, so that plant growth will be better. So, it is not only directly going giving the nutrient, apart from the directly giving nutrient, they are also changing the biochemical reaction in the soil for a better plant growth and also this as a energy source. So, we have also documented different type of indigenous organic manures in India for suppose as biostimulator. So, they are enhancing the root growth, they are enhancing the metabolism within the plant and ultimately the growth and development and the yield. And if you see that is different type of there, that is panchagabba, what is, why is called panchagabba? There are five certain product we are getting from cow. Maybe it is cow urine, cow manure, it is ghee, dahi and there are lots of standard procedure I will really explain in our later parts of uh, lectures. So, also there is Sashyagabbo, Kunapajala, Sanjibani and also there are new things, Bijamrita, Jibamrita. So, there is some science between it. Whenever we apply these things along with our organic manure and organic package of practices, it stimulates the plant growth and also enhance the yield. Similarly, different type of plant protection agent like simply one is cow urine. One is cow urine, second is vermi wash. If you made one vermi compost in a small tank or small a bucket and if you put one just small opening in the lower side, when the water or that is the coming through the mixing with the compost as well as the earthworm body, if have some stimulating agent. And if you apply 10 percent cow urine along with the 10 percent vermi wash in any crop, it is not only enhances their production, but also they just they make the plant resistant somewhat for the attack of the insect pest. So, this traditional knowledge along with some scientific knowledge amalgamation nowadays are using the organic farmer for the plant protection measures. This is also we have the different type of indigenous technological knowledge. This is called ITK. It is the accumulated skill technology of a locality of a community. Previously, there is if you see whenever we have gone from any our burial ground or maybe sansan ground, every time we used to tell, please go take a bath. So, this is not a superstition because our forefathers know if we go certain area, I do not know in which for cause the patient has been died. So, maybe there may be some microorganisms, bad microorganisms, anything. So, it is better to take a bath. Always use before when there is a problem of breathing problem in the patient, we used to give in the tulsi, near the tulsi. Because this tulsi has a very high potential of the oxygen generation. This is oxygen generation plant. So, they amount, so if the patient is getting less amount of oxygen, he may get well. Likewise, cow dung, slurry, we are giving every time in our morning house. So, this has heavy micro bio potassium. That is the like also there are different type of these things like Ganga jal. If you store your Ganga water, if you in your house for one year also, 
it will not be any bad smell because they are in some bacteriophages within this water so that will not allow to grow other organisms. So, these ITK whatever our forefathers they have generated over the years we have to use them. We cannot tell this is superstition and our scientific mind we have to judge which knowledge is superstition, which knowledge is our definitely there is science and if we can use because this technology has been crammed thousands and thousands of years, it is not in a single day. So, we have to always use this technology along with our science, so that we can promote agriculture in a better way, in a sustainable way. If you see because kerosene oil, if you see control ant in climber to control the termites, this is also already known. Castor oil control white fly in cotton store. So, in the stored grain paste when you put some seeds and other things we made different type of oils. Similarly, there are ginger extract is there, garlic extract is there and they are very much oil and they we are always using this type of technology in our organic farming. So, but whenever we get some of ITK documentage is very much necessary. After documentation you have to validate whether this technology is worthful or not and when it is documented and validated then you can use for your future application. So, always I were telling organic farming we are from want to promote our government want to promote our scientific fraternity want to come at, but not the whole of the India or everywhere. Organic farming there is two concept one is niche area and one is niche crop. What is the niche area? In which area we should promote organic farming? One is the area where farmers are using already very less amount of fertilizer. If you see this is one map and if you see this the pink color, you can clearly see the fertilizer use is on less than 25 kilo per hectare. So, lots of area in Meghalaya, in northeast and other part Sundarban area, the fertilizer consumption is very less. So, whenever our target is to go for organic, we always to promote organic in this area where farmers are already using very less amount of fertilizer. If you suppose grow above 140 kilo this area if you see Punjab, Haryana and Western UP. So, already they are taking 2-3 crops rice followed by wheat. This all are very nutrient exhaustive crop. So, if you go to the total area organic it is next to impossible because you cannot give so much nutrient through organic because you have not so much source of organic manure. So, our first dimension will be the niche area where already farmers are using soil organic carbon is very high may be hill states in the northeast, Uttarakhand and other area and where yield level is little bit low. And for this part of India where already fertilizer area yeah, we should promote organic farming for a particular location or some particular crop may be from export oriented crop or domestic market, but not the whole area as a time. Our network project that ICAR Indian Council of Agriculture Research has started network program on organic farming from 2004 and in uh, if you see the map virtually our organic farming project has been working throughout the India from Kashmir to Kanyakumarika to Gujarat to our northeast. So, we have 20 location and 16 state. Apart from that different state agriculture university is there, ICR institute is there and different agroecological zone regions is there where there are lots of science, lots of research has been doing for the promotion of organic farming and whether which organic farming is good or whether organic farming cannot be done in such an area and package of practices development for different type of crops. And our government of India also have started different type of scheme. One is that PKVI that is Paramparagata Krishi Vikas Yojana, Paramparagata Matlab old traditional which are going on. That is the National Project on Organic Farming NPOF and also we are promoting organic farming not as a directly under this scheme, but the some other things. One is the National Food Security Mission because we have to produce enough type of food for our population and also for the horticulture produce that is National Horticulture Mission. Among these two projects also organic farming is being promoted by the government of India. And if you see bridging the yield gap, our ICR has been analyzed more than 3000 farmers for 16 state. We get, take the average yield what a farmers is getting. And also we have standardized if we follow organic package of practices how much yield you are getting. So, suppose you are getting yield A and a farmers getting yield B, then you have to see whether you are getting better yield under organic practices 
or a farmer is getting better yield under his maybe it is maybe traditional, maybe organic or maybe conventional that is inorganic or integrated. And we if we see most of the crops if you can see from mustard, ginger, buckwheat, sugar cane the yield gap is very high more than 30 percent. Whether in case of garlic, basmati rice, uh, finger the yield gap is low. So, it is mean even we apply our organic standard package of practices there is no chance of yield reduction because farmers are getting less yield, but we are getting higher yield when we go for organic package of practices. So, we should promote organic farming in such crops and in such areas. This is some production issue suppose one is the issue is the high volume of organic material is required it is very true. Suppose for supply of 50 kilo of nitrogen you have to apply 10 ton of FOM that is one truck load otherwise for urea you can give only two bag. So, there is a high value, but there is a some strategy is there not only you have to apply the organic manure you have to also different type of vermicompost you can preparation you can use OS decomposer you can also incorporate the legume crop in your field like different type of pulses so that your soil fertility is build up and over the years when your soil fertility build up has been happened you have not probably used 10 ton of FOM every year at that time you may need less amount of organic fertilizer. Then the non availability of cost effective non chemical practices pest and disease previously there was very less company is also available and we are not getting very organically good product for insect and disease management. But nowadays when the organic area has been increased organic production has been increased and there is a demand in the market lots of pharmaceutical companies and some pesticidal companies now are they are also producing organic pesticide just like previously you go to the market you will not get neem oil but if you go nowadays to purchase the neem oil you get 10 different brands so different type of company is coming for different type of pest and disease management practices organically so this is a very good sign for promotion of organic farming and if you see this is M S Saminathan. He is the called father of green revolution of India. He is our also the director general of ICAR. And one quote he told, I have told you niche area. In which area we should promote organic farming? Whole India or a particular some place? Northeastern state of our country are ideal for become a major organic farming region of the world. So there is a question why you are telling organic farming in the northeast, not in the other parts. So there are some scopes that I will tell here. First, why you are telling Northeast? Northeast India is consist of different states. It is Meghalaya, Mizoram, Manipur, Sikkim, Tripura, Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh and also the Sikkim. Among them, Sikkim is small state, it is go already going fully organic. So, government is also promoting doing organic cultivation in the rest of the seven states. One is the climatic diversity and rich biodiversity. Everywhere is too much is jungles, lots of biodiversity is there, lots of natural plants is there available, rainfall is available very from 2000 up to 10,000. So, when the rainfall is high automatically the forest cover, the ground cover, the grass cover is high and temperature is very much moderate, their temperature does not go below 30, 35 degree temperature. So, one thing is there when we apply the organic manure or soil organic carbon in the soil, if the temperature is very high most of the is carbon is produced to again carbon dioxide and that go back to the atmosphere. So, we cannot store carbon in a very good amount in this part. If you show the Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal region our organic carbon is only 0.4-0.5 percent, but in northeast 2 percent, 3 percent we are easily getting. So, the climatic variability is there, very low use of fertilizer. If you say farmers are getting only 10 kilo, 12 kilo fertilizer and they are not giving for every crop, probably they are using this fertilizer for rice or maybe some vegetable. So, if we want to make them organic, it is very easy for the northeastern people or the hill people as compared to the Punjab and Haryana people. And we have a very good amount of uh, manure and also it is shifting cultivation, there is a, some area is under um, the shifting cultivation, zoom cultivation, where farmers are using nothing not even organic manure, not even inorganic fertilizer, farmers are growing. If this area we can come under the organic farming, so and after the certification process and by restricting the burning, there is a huge chance of export oriented agriculture. And there is number of niche crops, very important crop. If you see the pineapple, 
you will not get this type of quality pineapple in anywhere in India, I think outside of the India, very sweet taste. Similarly, if you go the turmeric, the turmeric is known for its curcumin content. The Meghalaya turmeric that is Lakadang, the curcumin content is more than 6 to 7 percent. But if you grow turmeric here or other parts, that content is 3 to 4 percent. So, always we have to promote this type of crops under organic farming with proper value addition and packaging and certification so that we can earn a very good amount of foreign exchange. And if you see our research experiment, what is telling? Generally, people is telling if you go for organic, your oil will be reduced like that. So, we have done different experiment of different land configuration, maybe in sunken bed, in raised bed, if you see from 2006 to 2017, our most of the cases, the yield whatever getting under 100 percent organic or integrated at par. So, there is not so much variation. Initially, maybe 3 or 4 years year yield may be reduced, but after 5 or 6 years, their yield reduction is very much less. So, you can tell or at that condition organic farming is produced the same time of productivity level as compared to the inorganic or the integrated management. This is also same of a, for our different type of crops which are growing vegetables on the raised bed. And also the very much important one is the soil nutrient availability. Suppose every time I have already told you are applying only nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, but plant do not take these three elements. Plant take more than 10, more than 15, 16 elements from the soil. So, what that will happen? They are taking micronutrients, zinc, manganese, copper, iron. Most of the time, plant is taking back, but we are not applying in the soil because previously we are using organic manure. And organic manure is the source of all of these micronutrients. So, due to the less use of organic manure and only indiscriminate use of fertilizers, these micronutrients become deficient. And there are lots of not only the problem of the yield, but also of the human health is coming. So, we have to address and also we have seen not only the micronutrient, the available ANPK status in the soil also enhance. So, if we grow for organic farming, our soil become good. So, after 10 years, 20 years, when we give the same land to our future generation, it will not bad, it will be more good, it will be better than the today's condition and that is always should be our aim. If you see what is the enhancement of organic farming, if you see from 2003-4 to how 45 fold increase, matlab 45 times. So, if you the growth of this sector in India in last just 17 to 80 years and this is a very good sign that India has a many more potential to go for organic in near future. And if you see the last 6 year annual growth rate is 22 percent this is a huge growth and this is made only possible due to the different type of schemes and different type of research, maybe NPOF or other or ICAR, All India Network Project of Organic Farming Technology and other. And already we have seen Madhya Pradesh is the highest area and we have also growing Meghalaya, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Sikkim is already declared as a wholly organic state, I have already previously told you. There are different type of biomass, it is already available in the field it may be available in the jungle. There are a lot of weed biomass is also there that is growing in our periphery, but we do not know which plant, where, where, how much availability of this and how much nutrient is there. So, we have done different type of research work and we have seen there are some plants we can a farmers grow in his uh, barren land, he can grow in the barns like Kajana Skajan, Kajana Stratragonia, can Candida and also when are using and the tree biomass, lots of jungle biomass tree is available like uh, uh, Elnas nepalensis, Parkia roxbarga and if you see they take good high amount of nitrogen, high amount of phosphorus and potassium. So, in organic farming we have to always promote to grow this type of crops near, near about their farm or in the just where the uncultivable land or in the barn. So, that that can be used also as a compost for enrichment of the soil fertility. If you see this is the uncultivable land there are lots of jungle biomass is there. So, everyone is telling it is jungle is nothing is there, but it is a source. We should not say it is bad thing, it is one of the very good important thing. If you chop these plants, if you uproot this plant and make a good quality compost, along with you can earthworm and cow dung you can make a vermi compost that can help you for go for organic manure. Similarly, if you say we are growing here groundnut and in the barn there is some crop is growing. This is called tephrosia crop. This is also nitrogen fixing crop and their leaves also contain nitrogen more than 3 percent. 
So, you can in the lean season you can cut these leaves and mix within the soil that also enhance your soil fertility. Similarly, if you say we can grow for intercropping in between maize, soybean, soybean is a leguminous crop, they has the ability to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere. So, when they fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and put in the soil, the soil become fertile and they also give some amount of nitrogen to the associated maize growth. So, by this type of technology whatever the available and science based we have generated over the years, we can promote organic farming in a better way. If you see this is two weeds, everywhere I think you will know this weed is, this is the pinkish flower lantana camera. Everywhere in the roadside in jungle it is available, but it has also more than 3 percent nitrogen in its leaf. So, simply by cutting and chopping the leaves and if you make a good quality compost, you can use it. So, organic farming always we promote in a whole farm approach, not a particular only growing one crop. So, if we take care of this type of things, crop rotation, green manure and composting, weed biomass along with the diversification, there is a very good chance we can grow for organic farming without getting any yield penalty. This is one organic lead use model for the hills. If you see in the natural area when you promote certain type of crop, so there is a some crop we can grow. If you see in the top portion we are growing in the natural forest, after that we have done catch pit, catch pit means we mix small small holes, just dug the plant. So, the water can en entry here, so the water infiltration rate will be high, so the water will not coming as a surface. If the water coming along the slope, it will take lots of soil along with it. So, for the restricting of the soil loss we made keep. After that in the upper part we are getting the forage crops, because water when the slope is very high in the top portion we note this type of crop so that soil should be covered. So, that there will be less water runoff that will be soil loss and nutrient loss and in the lower side you can grow different type of crops, maybe your vegetable crop, maybe your field crops like maize and also other rice and huge crops. There is also I am telling different type of crops has been done also the niche crops. So, we should promote certain type of technology, we cannot go for organically for every crops. In certain area suppose in the UP or in Bihar or Uttar Pradesh maybe in Punjab Haryana, if we wanted to do organically our first question will come for which crop we should go for organic. It go for rice, if you go for vegetable, if you go for rice or other crops we always say promote organic farming in that part for high value crops where farmers can get a very good income. Probably he is getting 50 rupees for one cauliflower, but he is making the organic manure, organic farming grow cauliflower, he may get 80 or 90 or 100 rupees. Suppose he is case of dragon fruit, have you seen this fruit is more than 300 rupees or 400 rupees kilo in big bazaar. So, always you have to promote which crop, suppose in northeast turmeric is available, this turmeric is a very high value. Turmeric is people prefer for the north due to the high curcumin content and in the world market there is also very much demand. So, alloy should, should promote like from West Bengal you can go from some aromatic rice, pineapple from Meghalaya, from Arunachal Pradesh you can go for kiwi, from uh, ginger and turmeric. So, always we have to think which area we go to organic and which crop we should go organic. So, this concept has been that is why come one is niche crop and one is the niche areas. So, Niche crops a specific product few producer produce because everyone is producing then probably you will not get the market. So, which for which crops production is less and market demand is very high. So, we should promote that. This is the mission organic value chain development for northeastern region. Nowadays our government is promoting organic farming in a big way particular in the northeastern region of India. So, they, our government has started one scheme that is MOVCDA. So, it is one of the institutional system for promotion and development of organic farming and it is end to end value chain program. So, it empower farmers and it always facilitate to farmers to make some farmer producer companies that is FCs. Because if a small farmer is going for organically, he, the certification is very tough and he will not get his market. But if we promote the organic farming, in a cluster approach where 10, 20, 30 farmers make a group and they commonly growing agriculture under organic farming, it is very easy for them to get the organic certification and also it is very easy for them to sell their organic produce in some good market so that they can fetch a better price. And also this is we have already earmarked more than 800 crores 
in the just some phases for a promotion of organic farming in the northeast. So, target is the production of more than 150 farmer producer companies, about 1 lakh farmer members and 1 lakh area should be certified under this scheme. This is the government target and government is going in a very optimistic way and in near future there is a very good chance to make the northeastern region of India a organic half of the world. If we see also the mission component, so what is this institutional structure? The mission headquarters is situated in the Delhi and this organic mission existed in each of the states. It serves, suppose there is organic value chain produce, what is the mission is there in Meghalaya, in Sikkim, in Tripura, Orunachal Pradesh, Nagaland. So, they have also service facilities agencies. So, when we develop the value chain components, we have, we have to do their value chain production, value chain processing and value chain marketing. So, there is also lots of financial provision is government is making for capacity building, training and certification government is giving 100 percent assistance. So, a farmers have not to fetch a single rupee from his pocket. So, this is very much needed when you go for organic and certification which has some cost. So, if the government is giving all your cost for the certification, it helps them. Similarly, also they are giving for the transport vehicle 50 percent and processing unit also 75 percent to the farmer producing companies and 50 percent to the private. And this is the different type of crops is promoting under the MOVCD schemes. So, this is the northeast state brand, brand name is very much needed. Whenever you go for particular cloth or maybe particular shoe, you always want which brand it is. So, brand value is very much important. So, under organic in the any states, this brand value is also being promoted. Suppose one value is Sikkim organic. So, by getting that oh this is this product is from Sikkim, the whole state is organic. So, there is no question of any problem whether this is the certified or not. So, farmers can easily, a consumer can easily take or purchase in a better market. So, definitely we have also started the Orunachal organic, that is also the Naga organic, Tripura organic, Omega that is organic Meghalaya and Mission organic Manipur. So, also apart from the Sikkim, other states, the organic area is le very less at that time, but within 5 about 10 years, there is a tremendous scope to enhance the total production and make this region as an organic hub. There is also government some standardization and regulation. This is called FSS, that is food standard security, that is food safety standards. So, in the, whenever you produce some, any produce in your market, you need have to permission from the food safety standards before selling in the market. So, this standard act has 2006 has the permission to regulate, this has the provision to manufacture, distribute of the organic foods. So, and in the 2017 one standard is there that is called food safety and standard organic food regulation 2017. So, this has described clearly two type of certification process. One that is the organic production that is NPOP certification, it is the third party certification, it needs little bit lengthy process, it needs some documentation has to be clearly filled in your field, but this certification is very much necessary if you want to sell your organic produce outside the country, otherwise other countries will not accept and India will not allow for the export. But if all the farmers cannot go for this certification by small and marginal farmers, they can make a small groups and they go and apply for the PGS certification that is participatory guarantee scheme certification. This is very easy, very low cost, very cost effective and under that a group of farmer or farmer producing companies, they can produce their food organically, they can get the certification talk and market and throughout all over the India, all over the Indian domestic market, they can sell their produce by the PGS. So, all the organic food business operators, nowadays all sub company and value chains is coming, they have to maintain this regulation by the this FSC standard 1st July 2018. This is the PGS portal, this is participatory guarantee system for India, it is a portal created by government of India for the benefit of the farmers. So, if you see the total group is very more than 41,000 and farmers is more than 11 lakhs. So, there are every day there is some farmers can apply for this. This is very user friendly, a group farmers producer company can group, they can apply for this and there is a process of consumer verification is there and there are different type of activities also doing 
and it is very easy a farmers can easily take this portal help to make their certification where they are growing organic for a cluster approach and if you see online marketing initiative joybi kheti portal this is also recently started so the ministry of agriculture this is only not for the production based mostly for the marketing product trading so there is lots of market organic market a farmers probably may not know in which market a farmers is getting better higher produce so in that condition by this online marketing initiation with the joybi kheti portal he or she can see in which market which organic produce has a higher demand and what is the market price of that organic so this with the help of this it's the farmers are getting lots of information to sell their produce in a reasonably good price we always promote in organic farming in a integrated approach not in a sustainable approach because it's for a small and marginal farmer he cannot purchase the quality compost vermicompost from the outside so he it is better if he can produce within his own farm if you see this is the water so this water can be used as irrigation for the different type of crops and whatever the this livestock unit is there this water is directly coming to the pond so there is no need to give any feed to the fish similarly they can also use the compost or vermicompost with the help of the maize stock and the cow dung and that can so that one by product or waste product can be used as the input for the others and if you see this is the different type of valley land we have developed different type of organic farming system model with cereal vegetable fruit fishery and vermicompost unit we have also enlisted what is the economics for a small area of 0.4 hectare a farmers can get up to 73000 rupees that is 185000 per hectare similarly we have also developed this organic farming technology in the farmers field and farmers is getting very good income more than 179000 per hectare by doing this organic farming in his farm by a system and cluster approach thank you